next speaker is um, Andrea Yarberry, and she's also from the University of Maryland. And we'll be, um, she'll be talking about antibiotic measurements and recovery of manure and impacts on antimicrobial resistance in agricultural settings. Hello. So um, I'm sort of a subset, working on a subset of the new NEPA grant that Stephanie was talking about near the end of her presentation. And so my sort of role in this research is to um, understand how we extract these antibiotics from these complex manure matrices. And so she talked about sort of, you know, how they got tetracycline measurements from manures around farms um, and the ability to actually recover antibiotics from manures using different extraction um, methods is difficult. And so we're, it's a new method that I'm helping uh, Dr. Cliff Rice out with in um, the Beltsville USDA office. And so, you know, thinking about manure, you have manure coming from different animals. You have manure that's undergone different processes. So like Stephanie talked about, manure when it goes into the digester is much more solid than it is when it comes out. And depending on, you know, what animals are eating, which animal the manure is coming from, um, and the antibiotic biotic concentrations, diet, all those things are going to affect the ability of you for you to recover the antibiotics and actually extract them and measure them. And so we don't what we don't want to do is you know paint a picture that we are either seeing a lot of antibiotics or not seeing any antibiotics because our extraction protocol isn't sufficient. Um, and so the extraction effectiveness depends on the manure type and age. And as uh, antibiotic resistance concerns increase, I think that um, it would probably behoove us to start developing protocols, just like we have nutrient, you know, standard methodologies to measure nutrients in manure, um, standard methodologies to extract and measure antibiotics from manures and soils. Um, and so this accurate documentation of antibiotics and antibiotic residuals within manure before and after different treatments can help generate a better picture with regards to how various compounds in different quantities affect antimicrobial resistant genes or gene drone affection. Um, and so what do we know about antibiotics and manure? Uh, unlike nutrient management, I don't think that we have a clear picture of the quantities of antibiotic residues being applied to agricultural land whether that manure has been processed or not. And so I don't think that we have a clear picture of you know, concentrations being applied in general. Um, we also don't understand the bioavailability of the antibiotic residues from land applied manure. And those bioavailabilities uh, are heavily dependent on the different physiochemical properties of these individual antibiotic classes as well as individual antibiotics within the, uh, within the classes. And so this morning we talked about not lumping things, like Stephanie said, and so even if it's a tetracycline, it may not act like all other tetracyclines um, with its desires to chelate to metal cations and manures. Um, and these interactions that affect bioavailability also affect the extraction abilities. And so there is an importance of the extraction method when you look at the different organic solvents and things you use to pull the antibiotics out of the manure, it depends on how many antibiotics you're trying to remove. And so if you're just looking at trying to analyze tetracyclines from manure, you can probably concentrate on the independent physiochemical properties of tetracyclines, but when you're more interested in a broad range, a multi-class uh, residue of antibiotics and manure, you need to uh, take into account, you know, the pH, the organic solvents you're using, the type of extraction protocol you're using, and so all these things sort of compound with the more antibiotics you're looking at. It makes it difficult um, for recovery. And so when we were looking at what antibiotics to just include as a first shot, like can we, can we just recover these using spiked blank manure, right? First, you need to know if the method's going to work. Um, this is so we um, uh, we looked to this report uh, from the FDA, and there, this shows like different antibiotics being given to different um, common 
um, medically important antibiotics being given to different animals. And so of these various antibiotic classes for cattle specifically, tetracyclines, sulfas, penicillins, and macrolides are commonly used antibiotics for cattle. And so of those classes, for what we have looked at is um, within the tetracycline class, we've looked at oxytetracycline, tetracycline, and chlorotetracycline for recoveries. <coughs> um, macrolides, we currently are looking at telathromycin and tylosin tartrate. Um, of the sulfas, we're just looking at sulfadimethoxine. And we're also looking at a couple of cephalosporins, which are beta-lactams. Um, and those are cephalosporin 7 aminocephalosporonic acid. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> this is a very like methods based research that I'm doing at the USDA and so you know trying to think about how we're going to use this right because we're all interested but we also just want to be able to actually see if we're getting recoveries. Um, and so where would you start with that? Obviously a literature review. And most of the papers that I found doing these extractions and looking at validating these protocols are from the EU. And so the EU actually has sort of this um, antibiotic, uh, they're trying to uh, develop a standardization. And so what they consider an effective recovery is when you can recover a spike sample between 70 and 110%. And so those are sort of our like golden goals when we're looking at these extractions that we're doing. Most of these four papers that we've sort of honed in on their methods, um, they were recovering anywhere from like 80 to 120 percent. So they tout very good recoveries of these different classes and specific types of antibiotics that we are also looking to recover. And so um, they use a variety of extraction methods. They use um, accelerated solvent extraction. Uh, they use liquid-liquid extraction, solid phase extraction, um, all these different things that I'll talk about further. Um, but they encompassed a broad array of methods and all of their extracts were analyzed on an HPLC or UPLC uh, tandem mass spec, mass spec. So basically we have that technology. So we're going to use these methods so that we can analyze them and quantitate using a similar technology to there. And so for my first extraction attempt, we took this uh, method by Jacobson et al. in 2006. And it was a very uh, time-consuming method, um, but we thought that we'd give it a shot. You essentially take your manure, you spike it with your antibiotics of interest at a one milliliter, one milligram per liter, so one ppm concentration. And then you take that manure, you freeze dry it. You take the freeze-dried manure and you apply it to the sand column, these little sand columns that then just get put on an accelerated solvent extraction device, we call it the ACE, and then that gets uh, put under high temperature and pressure and uh, different solvents are administered at high temperature and pressure and that runs through the columns. You extract, you take that extract and then you want to remove all of the lipids that are still left from your manure matrix. And so they used hexane, which is a, an organic that is known to be very favorable for lipids. And so you did a heptane extraction, and then you take the aqueous phase, dilute it to 500 milliliters, and then run it through a couple of columns that are designed to remove more lipids and also sorb to your antibiotics. And so now your antibiotics are stuck to these Columns. They're called, so this is solid phase extraction. And so in order to get those antibiotics off of your column, you use an organic solvent like methanol, acetonitrile. Some people have tried acetone um, or like mixes of them. We used methanol for this case. And so you then extract your antibiotics with five mils of methanol. And so in the end of it, you have five milliliters of this pure extract that should just contain antibiotics as well as whatever else is contaminated from your manure. And then you dry that down because it's at too high of a concentration or too low of a concentration to measure. And then you reconstitute it at a smaller volume so that you can actually see it on your machine. So that's sort of this process. 
Um, and so what did we find after doing all of that? And this, it was like a, like a three or four day process. And so when you think about these methods that people are using and validating, and how long these antibiotics stick around in manure, if you're using, if you're taking this manure and you're spending four days at room temperature just to get, you know, one sample. In this case, I think that we actually only did three samples. It was like a triple hit spike. We were just, you know, it's just seeing if it's going to work before we take any energy and actually doing real, you know, tests. And um, what we found was that we got zero to four percent recoveries of our beta lactams, which are notorious for not being recovered or found ever in manure, which I'll get to uh, later. And we found that uh, telapromycin we recovered 53 percent. So that's, I mean, that's a pretty high recovery for what I've been doing. Uh, 53% feels like a win. <laughs> um, oxytetracycline recovery was 23%, and in this paper, they found recovery of 42%. So we recovered half as much as they recovered. Um, and then of this, we got 0.3% recovery of the sulfa in the paper, they recovered 83%. And so already, you know, you're thinking, well, awesome, this is obviously not a standard protocol, right? I mean, I did it to the T, and I did it twice. This is only the second time that I'm showing you. And so we also uh, took through this um, just spiked manure, spiked sand. So like the sand column process, we just spiked some 1 ppm of antibiotics just to the top of the sand to see. Uh, it was like a, you know, just QC. And the blue and the brown are the actual recoveries. So this isn't like loss to sand. It's the recoveries we got after sand. So it's more like one minus is what we would have lost. But basically, we used two different types of sand. White sand is blue and red sand is brown. And we found that we, we got, um, you know, 30 to 160 percent recovery of all these antibiotics <coughs> with sand. But mostly, we didn't get anywhere more than 80 percent recovery with just sand. So we're already losing up to 20 or you know 20 percent of some of these antibiotics just to the sand so we decided that that's obviously not a method that we're going to spend any more time on um, and we also grew benzyl penicillic acid which is a byproduct it's a metabolite of penicillin so i think that because of the high temperature and pressure that you use in the accelerated solvent extraction you're actually metabolizing converting penicillin g to penicillic acid um, which is interesting because when you think about temperatures on fields, I mean, that's a natural process. So then we looked at a second extraction. This one looked more favorable because it was less work. We weren't using solid phase extraction, which is that process where you take your pseudo final product and you run it through the columns. And so we weren't using that, which is an expensive process of one cartridge uh, costs a couple dollars. And so when you're doing this, on a lot of samples, it builds up fast. Um, and drying down samples after you elute from the solid phase extraction is also quite time expensive. And so this, this method uh, was done uh, by a researcher out of Turkey, Karaka et al. Um, she basically took a two grams of manure pellet and added an organic solvent, which is the, um, the solvent that antibiotics like to be in. And then also added a 0.1 molar EDTA um, McIlvain buffer. So McIlvain is a phosphate citric acid buffer. And so this is all at a pH of 3. And so at a pH of 3, a lot of your antibiotics are not charged. And so they are more favorable to being extracted from manures into an organic solvent. And so um, you basically took a 50 mil centrifuge tube. We weighed out 2 grams of manure. We added the acetonitrile, the aqueous buffer, and then some sodium chloride, and we mixed the crap out of it, either using sonication or vortex mixing. And so vortex mixing, it's a 15-minute mixing process, and the author of this paper, I think, had like a fancy vortex mixer where she didn't have to hold the tube over the vortexer for 15 minutes at a time with like 10 samples. So your arms go numb and it's not a pleasant process. Um, whereas on a sonicator, you just kind of sit it and let it go. 
Um, but the it was sonication and then an additional mixing with a rotary mixer. So I was essentially trying to find a way to mix these samples that didn't involve my direct required uh, arm numbing. And so I thought, well, we could do sonication, but we could also add some rotary mixing just to shake it up more physically, like a, you know, just rather than molecularly. Um, and so after we mix it, then we centrifuged it and collected the acetonitrile layer and took that acetonitrile layer and dried it under nitrogen. So we're still drying the sample because it's still at a much larger concentration than what you'd be able to, oh goodness, okay. And um, <laughs> what we found was that um, based on, oh goodness. And we also, so we had spike samples with this and we had matrix adjusted calibrations curves. And so one of the things that people do when they take these antibiotics and they quantitate them is they use an internal standard. And so they take that internal standard, they apply it to their pure calibration standards. So that's a calibration standard made in methanol. And then they take an internal standard and they put it in their recovered samples and their manure, their extracted manure samples. And then what they do is there's a ratio, right? So you have a known spike concentration of your internal standard, and you have a known response on your um, MS. And so you take the area of response of a known concentration in your pure standard, and then that area of response of your known concentration in your matrix, and then you use that as a factor to adjust for your matrix, either suppression or enhancement. And so by using this method, people are able to not have to extract blank manure and then use that as a calibration curve. So it saves time uh, in your extractions. But what we found analyzing, so I basically took some blanks through and spiked them. And so I had a matrix calibrated calibration standard curve. And then I had a pure standard curve. And then I had some recovered samples. They all had an internal standard of the same concentration in them. And what I found when I analyzed the recovered samples using just the internal standard with the pure curve is that I got uh, anywhere from 41 to 83 percent increase in recoveries without using with just using the pure curve and so basically I was overestimating my recoveries even when I was taking into account my matrix suppression or enhancement with just using an internal standard but when I used the manure extract as my medium for the calibration curve, uh, my recoveries were suppressed, except for in pilots and privates. Um, so basically that means that if it's the, it's the norm, when you're analyzing samples, you just sort of put an internal standard spike in and then you run it through. But is this giving us the complete picture of the antibiotics? that are in our manure if it's overestimating for me or underestimating still. So I think it's important that we um, extract more blank samples just so that we can actually use your, the manure that we're extracting to quantitate the antibiotics that are in the manure. And for mixing, uh, we found that there was really no significant difference between sonicating and vortexing, so we stuck with sonicating. Um, these are the same recoveries as before. And also, uh, we have 20 to 85% lower recoveries than the original method that I followed through. And so I'm, I'm not sure, there may be something I'm doing in lab, but I have not yet been able to recover anything um, to the degree that these papers are recovering things. Um, and then, uh, just three minutes. Um, I, there's, we did the extraction again, uh, where we essentially, um, increased the concentration of the buffer, uh, that chelates. And so tetracyclines, I said, like to chelate to metals. And so when you use a higher concentrating, concentration of a chelating agent in your extraction, you're actually preventing those tetracyclines from sorbing to the iron in your manure and allowing for them to come out in your organic solvent. And so when we increased the concentration of EDTA, we found an increase in recovery, not just for tetracycline, but for the other antibiotics we were looking at as well. And I think that that's 
because EDTA is not only chelating irons, it's also chelating other things in the matrices and that may be sorbing to the other antibiotics. So like I said, there's other physiochemical properties and like you can see, our recoveries are vastly different for each of these antibiotics. And so finding a one-shot method to recover these antibiotics isn't easy. It's not, you know, it's as with all method development, but um, it's definitely not painting a picture of like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, like when you, you get in the lab and you're like, okay, I'm doing these antibiotic recoveries. This is going to be great. I have a recipe. I'm going to follow this recipe. This should work. And then it doesn't. So what are these authors, how are they validating their methods? Because it takes a lot more than what I'm seeing. Um, and we did a lot more, but basically where that leaves us is it's still necessary to understand how antibiotics partition between the solid and liquid phase, because as we do processing with the manure, we find that you know the liquid content goes up, the solids go down. So that's the next step once we actually figure out these extraction methods. Um, we need to know how best to sample and preserve the manure to optimize the chances of accurate detection. And um, several methods exist to extract antibiotics from manure, but they're difficult to repeat with reliable recoveries. And so that's something that I think um, some focus needs to be emphasized um, and improve the standardization of the extraction methods.